So far in this series, we've covered various distributions based off of Debian and Fedora. But we've only covered one distribution based off of Arch. And while the foundation might not be that important for beginners, we're going to try and keep things as balanced as we can here in case we do see any major differences. And on that note, today we'll be looking at a distribution called Endeavor OS, which naturally is based off of Arch. At the time of filming, it is currently ranked in fifth position on DistroWatch. But there is a meme amongst the Linux community about Arch users because Arch can be very hard to use sometimes. So let's see how Endeavor OS might be interpreted by a beginner looking at it for the first time and whether it's a good fit or not. Because this is more of a proof concept today, we won't be going over the usual steps as we normally do in just about every video. So we'll be skipping making our Ventor USB and we'll skim over the BIOS section as well. However, if you are interested in more of a tutorial or something you can follow along to to finally leave Windows and switch to another distribution, you can check out any of these videos right here where we do cover that entire process. And you'll see why we're skipping those steps in just a moment. But for now, let's hop on to the Endeavor OS website and download the .iso file, which is what we'll use to install our brand new operating system. So on the Endeavor OS site, there's a tiny little cookies notice at the very bottom, but it's not in the way, so we can completely ignore it. Scrolling down the page reveals lots of download links, so find the one relevant to your location and click on it. We'll also be skipping the part where we transfer this ISO file onto our Ventoy USB. So now we're in the try before you buy or the live USB section of Endeavor OS. The welcome menu has a lot of options, but for now we'll focus on installing properly, which is the first option at the top left. Clicking on that starts the installer, which begins with the option to install offline. A video about installing distributions offline coming up some point in the future. If we start online, we'll get the option to pick our desktop environment. But if we go offline, we'll get KDE Plasma as the default, being closer to a Windows experience. Once you've chosen, it's time for the usual language, location and keyboard layout. If we picked online, we can now pick our desktop environment, but we'll be sticking with the default of KDE. Keep this menu in mind for the moment because we'll come back to this menu later on in the video. This section allows us to choose which packages we'd like to install, but the default selection is absolutely fine. The same goes with the bootloader options in the next section. As usual, we'll be selecting a race disk in this video as it's the most simple option. Then we'll set up a local account and auto login. Now for the final review and we're installing. If you've seen the Manjaro video on this channel, then this installer might look familiar to you, just like how Fedora installers look almost identical. The same goes for Arch as well. By the way, just a little note here, remember we did pick online, which means that at some point this installer will require internet access. But what happens when that internet access gets interrupted? Well, guess what happened during the first install process here? That internet access might have had even the smallest hiccup, but that interrupted the installer. This meant that I had to hit the cancel button. And by hitting the cancel button, you'd think that you need to go and just hit install again and go through that same process. But unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. Looking back at the menu where we selected a race disk, this is gone if you happen to interrupt the installer at the wrong time. That's because as part of this process, again, we're trying to keep this very simple so a beginner might understand it, but on a broad term, we have stopped the install process and during that install process, our hard drive or SSD was locked, meaning that no one else could make changes to it. And that is represented here in that we don't have the choice of which disk to erase because that drive is locked. To unlock the disk, it required an entire restart. And then you could go through the install process as you did before. So if you are installing a distribution and that distribution happens to require internet access and that internet access gets interrupted, 
then it's highly recommended that you restart the entire live USB or try before you buy section so that it gets installed properly. And now you can see why it's kind of important for installers to not need too much stuff online. But we can't fault Endeavor OS for this because they did give us an offline option. So we'll move on from now. Once we're done installing, don't forget to click restart now to get into the newly installed operating system. Once we've rebooted, we can check out the rest of the items on this welcome screen. But once we're confident we know what we're doing, we can select the don't show me anymore. But hold on a second, what's this? Keep this in mind for later on, because this is about to come up very soon. We're already in dark mode, so let's take care of scaling by right clicking on the desktop and selecting display configuration. But here's where we hit that fork in the road. So far on this channel, we've had one rule that has to be true for every single distribution. We must not be required to use the terminal under any circumstances, because for the Windows refugees, they shouldn't be expected to use terminal because they didn't need to use terminal on Windows. Once again, a reminder that this is for beginners, people who use computers in very basic ways. So the alternative to that is a graphical user interface or a GUI. And thus, if a distribution requires a terminal, it fails. So if a beginner installs Endeavor OS, how do they install their apps? If you do a search online, you'll find people telling you how to install an app store or a software center. But how do you go about installing the software center? Yep, it requires a terminal to do this. This is because Endeavor OS is built primarily for advanced users. You might have noticed during the startup screen that this is very much a bare bones system. This is meant to come with even less than we would normally expect from either a Debian or Fedora install because an advanced user might not like using those stores. So for them, they would prefer to use the terminal to install things, which has been the norm on Linux for a very long time and only recently started to change. However, for a beginner, unfortunately, that means that we have failed the no terminal challenge. So then you might be asking, why cover it on this channel then? Well, it's good to point out that some distributions are not designed for beginners, and that's perfectly okay. In fact, it would be really sad if every distribution was just trying to be a Windows clone and none of them were trying to be innovative. So different distributions for different crowds is a good thing. That's part of what makes Linux such an incredible platform for people to use. But that doesn't mean we have to end the video right there. There's two more things we can discuss on this. For starters, remember I said keep that menu in mind at the very, very beginning? Imagine that during the installer, we had a menu that offered us a chance to install one of the usual software centers. So for KDE, we'd get the offer for the Discover app, or for GNOME, we'd get the offer for the GNOME software center. If the developers were interested in this, then this could be an easy workaround. That means that beginners could install these stores, but more importantly, advanced users would still need the option to have no store installed. That is critical because we don't want to take away from what advanced users probably love about Endeavor OS, which is they get to build it themselves. And the other thing we'll do, which we don't normally do here, we'll see what the process is to get that store installed which does mean we will use a terminal even though we have failed the no terminal challenge. But for those of you who don't care about the no terminal challenge and want to start getting into more advanced or intermediate uses of Linux, then this section might interest you. Again, this is more of a proof of concept. So let's open the terminal and try and install the Discover app, the default for KDE Plasma. This is a two-step process. The first part is to type in the command sudo pacman s flatpak sudo stands for super user do pacman is the default package manager for most arch distributions the s stands for synchronize and flatpak is what we want to install onto our system now we'll get a warning 
and a prompt for our password. Then we'll need to press Y and enter. Once that's done, the next command is sudo pacman s discover, which is almost identical to the previous command, except what we want to install at the very end. We'll also need to press Y and enter again. Now we can open the not a start menu and find discover underneath system. So we have access to all of Flathub now, but all of our system updates will need to happen elsewhere as this distribution is not built to be updated through the Discover app. So it would be more like Mint where updates happen in a separate app entirely. So where do we get those system updates? If you haven't closed the welcome menu, you can access it from here. But if you did close the welcome menu, head over to the not a start menu and go to system. Click on EOS dash update and it will open a terminal window. Type in your password and your updates will start. So the burning question, can Endeavor OS replace Windows? For intermediate and advanced users, this answer might be a little different because clearly the popularity as stated on DistroWatch means that a lot of people are resonating with Endeavor OS, but specifically for beginners who have just left Windows. I believe at this point, the answer would be no. This is not a great place to start if you're brand new to Linux and consider yourself a beginner or a basic user when it comes to computers. Some might argue that using the terminal is required to use Linux properly, but these videos would very respectfully disagree. But as I mentioned before, not every distribution needs to be beginner friendly. Some of them should be for intermediate to advanced users. It doesn't have to be a one size fits all solution. So if you want to learn how to use terminal, then maybe this is a great place to start being that the popularity of Endeavor OS means that it should technically be easier for you to find help online when you need to start learning those terminal commands. But if you don't want to learn to use terminal and you just want a computer for very basic uses, whether that be browsing the internet or gaming, then there's a reason that these videos keep flashing up on the screen. These are distributions which you don't need to use a terminal for. These will get you up and running with your Steam games in no time. And maybe once you're comfortable with using Linux in a basic way, you can come back to Endeavor OS in the future. But once again, if you want to take on the challenge of being an advanced user, then you're more than welcome to try Endeavor OS.